Welcome to Beautiful Work, Beautiful Life, the podcast. I'm so excited today to introduce you to my new friend and colleague, Laurel Boyvin. And we're kicking off our new podcast series today. I'm so excited to do that. Welcome, Laurel. Thank you, Laurel. It's so nice to be here. And I am thrilled to work with you and bring this, our work together to, to others. I know. And I think it's kind of fun, you know, this uh, Laurel and Laurel. So nobody has to be confused. They're, they're just talking to Laurel either way, listening to Laurel, <laughs> which is kind of one of the things that I think got us connected at the beginning was we both had that name. We're both coaches. We both had that name. We're like, oh, what's she doing? What's she doing? <laughs> that has been really fun. When I was younger, it was always intimidating to be in the same room as another Laurel. And now that I am in the season of life that I'm in, I, I love it. I welcome it. I do too. I do too. So thank you for agreeing to uh, join me in this uh, podcast experiment. I, I've i been approaching life this year. One of the things that um, I sent out in one of my recent emails was really approaching life as everything is an experiment. If we approach it from that space, we don't have to worry about failing. We don't have to worry about um, you know, all we're, all we can worry about is how does it, how, what's the experience like and how does it feel for us? And I think that that's, you know, how we're going to go right into this is, uh, you know, here we are together and we are so dedicated to this process of helping people do inner work, which we're calling the beautiful work that we are, we want to bring it out here and make it more available and make it mainstream, like part of the conversation, right? It, it, it is. It is so beautiful. And it that is so um, very consistent with my approach that I always think if we could uh, um, approach everything in life with the wonder that we did as children, that wonder and curiosity will just open us up to new experiences without judgment. And it's, and it's beautiful. So beautiful. So beautiful. So Laurel, let's talk about inner work. Let's talk about this beautiful work. And um, for our listeners and maybe the, you know, the, the new listeners that haven't done a lot of inner work that might feel a little intimidated by the idea of digging in and looking at what's happening in there. I feel like, you know, what we want to do today, I think is invite them to, to understand what the work is all about and what the potential beautiful outcome can be from doing the work as some hopefully motivation and inspiration to get them off and running in their own inner journey. Mm, and it's something that I wish someone had introduced me to decades ago. Mm. Um, I really am fairly new within the last 10 years, probably of this self-awareness and inner work. And um, it would have changed my life years ago had I been introduced to it sooner. Yeah. Do you think, Laurel, you were doing it um, in some modified version earlier on or doing even like prep work for, you know, when the, the bigger work that you did later? Oh, absolutely. I um, I have been keeping a journal since 1977 when I was 13 years old. Oh, I love that. And um, and probably just, you know, tapping into my own thoughts and my feelings and my perception of the world around me it was all captured through a pen and paper. Yeah. Um, and that was somewhat releasing at, you know, just in the writing process. Um, so I do, I think you're right. It, it, I was probably practicing bits and pieces of it long before I knew. Yeah. And journaling is such a beautiful way to uh, begin your inner work and to, to make it to be, it's a beautiful um, adjunctive tool to um, doing this kind of talk work or bibliotherapy, you know, reading books, self-help books. There's so much out there that we can partake in now. All the YouTube videos, this podcast, other podcasts, right? It's it's like a rich time to have the opportunity to really dig in and know that the tools are accessible to you, right? And journaling to me is one of the one of the most important tools that we can offer people and encourage people to explore. Yeah. And so what about you? What, what bits and pieces, what tools did you use before YouTube and podcasting was available to us? I know. So for me, um, you know, I didn't journal early on. I didn't start journaling until I was close to 40 and I journaled because I met, a. Uh, 
a really good friend who's still a, one of my dearest friends of, of life today. And she was a really committed journaler. And I didn't even know what journaling was early on in my thirties. I had nobody talked about it. Nobody did it around me. And she started to share a little bit about her journaling experiences and how important it was, how big part of the, her life it was. And so I think I started exploring then, but before that, um, and we'll go into this more when we talk about our stories later in the podcast series, but, you know, at 30, I, I really re recognized that I was on a path I didn't want to be on. Uh, and I wasn't looking at things internally that were really, really disruptive and bothering me. It didn't look like it on the outside, but the life, my inner life was really suffering. Mm -hmm. And, um, so the first thing that I did was go to group therapy. I actually went to adult children of Al alcoholics meetings and um, learned the 12 step program through that. And that was a beautiful avenue being in group and learning how to speak in group, which was really frightening to me early on. And then therapy, I was in therapy for a few years and had a really great counselor that helped me, you know, make, take those steps that really changed. And then from there, energy medicine and a bunch of other things that, you know, I won't get into today, but there's just, like we said, there's so yeah. many tools, so much out there. So many tools and one leads to another. One leads to another. Yeah. yeah. So for you after journaling, what was your next step in doing inner work? I would say probably, you know, I spent a lot of time in nature, a lot of time alone. Mm -hmm. um, those meditative places mm -hmm. that again, were not internal, they were very external, but they brought me that sense of well-being and peace. Um, and then, you know, I think it was probably in my 40s, I discovered yoga, um, energy work, um, holistic self-care, um, all of those things just, you know, kind of built on each other. And the combination of having all of those tools, I love, I love having so many different kind of um, tools to go to when I need something. Yeah, yeah, super, super. Yeah. So I think that many people often are introduced to this idea of inner work or this beautiful work um, in not such a beautiful space of life. Oftentimes we're in crisis. I know for me, you know, that moment when I realized I was on a path that was not going to serve me well, and I had to do something, it was very scary. Um, I didn't really know where to turn and what to do. Thankfully, somebody came in my life like a little angel and helped me take a couple steps, which was wonderful, which is often happens as you talk to people and share stories. Um, so yeah, this idea of um, it doesn't, you know, I think the reason that I felt so dedicated, and, and, you know, I'm so happy that you're here, and, and really to re relabel this work as beautiful work is because usually, it doesn't feel beautiful in the beginning, it feels quite ugly, it feels quite the opposite, right? It feels like quicksand. <laughs> <laughs> that you just can't get out, right? And um, you know that what is that saying? You know, um, when you're going through hell, you just keep going, right? Don't turn back. Um, it does. It feels messy and uncomfortable. And there is that point where you know you kind of step slowly into it, and then you're deep into it. And really, you know, the reward is just on the other side of the the biggest moments of discomfort I've found in my own experience, right? You know, right when I'm ready to throw in the towel and be like, oh, that's too much to think about. That's too much to focus on. Um, I know the richness is just beyond my, my reach or beyond my view. Yeah. 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 Um, and the idea of trusting in the process, I actually had, I used to say that a lot with one particular client, she actually um, had a, had that saying etched in a stone and gave it to me at some point. But believing, you know, at the beginning, that no matter how painful it is, or how scary it is, or how ugly it might feel, you know, that you have to face it, whatever, that trusting the outcome will, will so be worth every bit of effort that you put into it. And mm -hmm. I know that for me, even, even 30, 35 years into my journey of doing this beautiful work, it becomes more beautiful. It, there's a, it is a never ending 
um, journey. And, and there really isn't a whole lot of ugly anymore. You know, like there's some scary moments or moments when I think, oh, wow, I thought I finished that work up or, um, oh, what's going on with me now that I, I'm in this space? How did that happen? And, and yet it doesn't feel scary anymore because, because of those tools we were just talking about so many tools, you have so many tools at your fingertips ever over time. Yeah. Right? yeah. And have you been in this uh, situation where the same lesson presents itself and each time you're more familiar with the lesson and you recognize it as a friend. So I, I do this when it appears again, I think, Oh, I thought I had finished that work. I thought I had solved that. Um, I thought I had learned through this lesson, but it's back again. And so I now look at it like another opportunity to, to get better at learning that lesson. And it's not fearful. Um, it just reminds me, I've got a little bit of unfinished work to do. So I, you know, it's interesting how the, I think our response and the, our perspective changes as we become more comfortable with the discomfort. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, you know, when you were talking about that, I was thinking about how the lesson, you know, when the lesson comes back, it usually is that we haven't finished it Mm. or we thought we did it, but we didn't really get to the heart of what that issue was or what that challenge was or what that lesson was meant to be for us. And so the return to it is an opportunity to, to truly embody you know, the wisdom, the beauty of the wisdom of the lessons, because that's the work, that's the essence of the work, you know, is mm-hmm. to, to take these, you know, uncomfortable issues, challenges, uh, struggles, frustrations, and, and they become our wisdom, as we do this beautiful work, right? Yes. And, you know, um, I think that the wisdom that you're talking about, when we combine the wisdom with our faith or our belief. Mm -hmm. And I I think we have to have faith and belief in, in two things, ourselves internally, and then, you know, the universe, the greater beingness of, of whatever we believe in and the combination of the faith and belief in that and the wisdom just makes it so rewarding. And our ability to move through those things becomes ease and grace. I think Mm -hmm. it's Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it warms me just thinking about all of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So much. One of the things that um, I knew I wanted to make a point of before, you know, we wrap up our intro session today is this idea of, you know, facing the discomfort Mm -hmm. and that when we can transform the looking at it as a problem, into a portal or a doorway to um, getting more in touch with our authentic voice and self and our own power and the life that we really want to be living. Like that's really the beginning of the transformation and the potential of the work is no longer calling them problems or whatever, whatever the word is that has a negative converse, uh, connotation to it. And instead saying, here's my opportunity for something really powerful to happen in my life. I often, the word I often use is messenger. Um, I often think of people that come into my life or situations, circumstances that come into my life that cause me whatever, you know, angst, any negativity. I, if I look at it, look at them, look at the situation as a messenger and, um, you know, again, the curiosity and then compassion, right? And so those are, that's kind of the tools or the combination I use for myself and the situation or another person. It's the wonder, the curiosity, the compassion, and a flow happens that you wouldn't otherwise get if you brought in the negative connotations or even sometimes our body just resist. And it's a resistance that we don't know where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, But being able to recognize that and somewhat, you know, open, um, open up to it. You know, I, I think, are we opening towards something and letting something flow through us? Or are we closing and trying to shed it or resist it? Um, And that in the resistance is, I think, when the conflict comes. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's so spot on. I love the way you just lay that out. Cause I think that that's so powerful in terms of, you know, how we get stuck. You know, mm-hmm. that's really the essence of getting stuck, right? Is not knowing how to flow through and into the experience. And these tools that we'll talk more about over time is really about how we can learn to navigate that territory and flow through these troublesome areas of life and grow and thrive in them rather than feeling like we're stuck and, and um, you know, there's no way out, right? Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, another um, approach that I use is if I'm not able to flow with something, I envision it flowing around me. Um, And so I don't have to have the strength. I just have to have, I just have to, I I guess, be flexible to let things flow around me and they'll pass. Yeah. 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 It reminds me of Tai Chi when you're talking, it reminds me of my years of teaching Tai Chi and that idea of energetics, you know, the, the energy of being flexible enough to move, you know, with whatever's coming at you and, and whatever you're encountering in life and knowing how to do that dance, because it does become a dance over time. Yeah. And, um, and I think of it, it's funny that you think of it as in the Tai Chi realm. I think of it in the nature realm in a tree, you know, a tree now, a tree rarely tumbles because the wind or the rain or the snow, it, it just stands and lets it happen um, because it has deep roots. And I remind myself that all the time that we're not that different from a tree with our deep roots and our ability to, to survive the elements around us, as long as we are strong inside. Um, So it's all good. I love, I love those examples. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And the other thing that came up for me too, as we were talking, um, you know, knowing we were going to go into our our podcast session today, was the idea of, um, you know, for many people, when we we first encounter the experience of feeling like something needs to change in our lives, you know, we're getting a wake up call, we're getting that messenger coming into our life. It's oftentimes, you know, we don't, we don't want to, we, we don't want to be the person that has to do it, right? It's really hard to take responsibility, particularly if you're in a dance with another person and it's a relationship problem. And oftentimes, you know, we'll look to the other person to change rather than us changing. And I think that ultimately, you know, this beautiful work that we're talking about is really owning, completely owning and saying, I'm taking responsibility, you know, for my life and the quality of my life. It's nobody else's responsibility. It's mine and mine alone. And I know over time, and this is so true, and I love it when clients see this when we're working together, when you just stay in your own lane and do your work and you dedicate yourself to the task and you just keep evolving and growing, how suddenly other people around you also start to change and you didn't even ask them to. Do you find that Laurel? I do all the time. It happens so much. And, you know, I think part of it is the energetics, right? It's, it's whatever's around you, whoever's around you can't stay the same as you are, you know, in flow and in flux and changing. Right. Um, And I think that's so incredible to watch because it is again, lack of resistance, right? So, you know, when you're trying to change another person, um, they resist and as they should. (laughs) And, but when we focus on ourselves, we can, we can impact change around us without even, without any resistance. Yeah. Except our own resistance, of course. Right, right. Yeah. Which we'll get yeah. Into. So yeah. We'll always encounter plenty of that. And yeah. then all kinds of good faces that it wears and shows how it shows up. So we, we're definitely going to spend a whole, at least a whole podcast on, on that topic and talk to people and hopefully encourage them to be able to just see it as resistance and learn how to work with it well and, and not let it interrupt and um, take you away from the potential, you know, that's there, right? Absolutely. I think resistance serves a, um, an important role in change. Yeah. And I think also, you know, from um, a neuroscience perspective, we are hardwired to resist yeah. change and to resist, you know, our brain's job is to keep us safe. 
And it's our heart's job to tell the brain that we're safe. Yeah. So beautiful um, reorientation. You know, I feel like that is one of the reorientations that we'll, we'll be talking about and coming back to again and again mm -hmm. is the idea of um, shifting, you know, from instead of having the mind and the brain be in charge of everything, come down and let the heart be more of a guide and let the mind and the brain serve heart and soul space. And I think that that reorientation in and of itself is a huge countercultural movement. Absolutely. You know, we, we live in a, a, a place in, in a world where head thinking is what we're taught to do and we're expected to do. And when, you know, I, I try really hard to balance the, um, I think I've heard it referred to as three brains, the head brain, the heart brain, and the intuition, the gut brain. And when they're in balance, they, you know, they know when it's their turn to play. Yeah. Um, and when they're out of balance, you know, two of the three often don't even have a, a voice. Um, and so teaching myself and teaching my clients to tap into that is really, it, it, it's a practice, but it is absolutely beautiful what comes of that. Yeah. yeah. And, and that, you know, the idea of, um, I know when I think back on my own journey and thinking about, you know, the, the way that my body was trying to speak to me, mm -hmm. a lot of it had to do with the fact that I wasn't paying attention to the messages that were coming from my body. And so this idea of imbalance or illness or dis-ease in the body showing up to get our attention because we aren't paying attention to the reality that our body speaks to us as much as our head and our brain. Mm -hmm that this is a powerful shift to uh, encounter and embrace. It really is. And when you talk about, you know, inner work and the beautiful work, it's not just heart work or soul work or, or turning your brain off work. It is listening to your body and letting your body do the work naturally. And um, that is hard for us, you know, yeah. relying on, an internal source of information is not what we're taught to do. Yeah. 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 And so trusting right. that, just trusting that internal wisdom and knowingness. Um, it's such a gift that we're born with and we lose it somewhere along the way yeah. until we find it again. That's and right. then here we are. And here we are. And so that's going to be our invitation again and again and again to our listeners is, you know, are you, are you listening to what's happening? And are you honoring, you know, the messages and the impulses coming from within you? And how are you doing that? And, and if it feels scary to do it, and, um, you know, I think that, I, I think what I learned, and I, and I often say this, you know, to, to my clients, and I remind myself too, is just one step at a time. We don't have to know all the way to the end of some situation. And if we just take it one step at a time without that whole sense of I've got to figure it all out now and I have to have the right solution and I have to have my whole every step along the way, it feels so daunting and so scary. And oftentimes the projected outcome that we think we're supposed to be moving toward doesn't even end up being the, the outcome that materializes when you just allow yourself to do it step by step and let the universe organize with you and, you know, like, like you're talking about, you know, go with the flux and the flow. And when you do that, you know, you gain, I'm going to say greater confidence and trust in yourself that you're on the right path because each step is small and the feedback you get with each step is, is usually really good. Yeah. Um, the other thing I often talk about is stop asking how, yeah, and this comes in with the trust and the faith mm -hmm. that we get so caught up in how we're going to do something yeah. that we, we lose sight of what it is we want to feel as, as the end result or the end outcome. How do we want to feel? How do we want to live? Um, and focusing on bringing that feeling and purpose into our every day you know, it doesn't matter how we're going to do that for the next 50 years, but doing it each day ensures that we're going to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm. 
So let's leave our podcast maybe with a couple questions for listeners um, to invite them to do a little self-exploration as we sign off here today. So thinking about just our conversation, what question pops into your mind that you might pose to somebody about where what we talked about or where, you know, to invite them to into the beautiful work, their own beautiful work today? I think it ties into how do you want to feel? Um, and then, you know, once that you can, can identify how it is you want to feel, the follow-up question is, what do you need to do to feel that way? Yeah, yeah that's great. That's great. And I would that's say, yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, I think it's um, the idea of what in your life is is trying to get your attention that you know is is asking for some sort of change Mm -hmm. and don't worry about what the change is just let yourself do the exploration of what is it and how is it showing up how is it coming through as something needs to change and just let yourself just stay with that and accept it embrace it invite it think of it maybe instead of uh, as a scary problem instead as a potential portal to a new beginning that could be filled with all kinds of wonder that you have no idea of right now. So that's, I think that's my question. for. I love that question. I'm going to use that myself. Um, (laughs) And it reminds me of, I'm not sure whatever game show it was, but you had door number one, door number two, or door number three to choose from, right? Yeah. (laughs) And those possibilities, not knowing what was on the other side of the door, but knowing you get to pick one. Yeah. And it's going to take you somewhere wonderful. Yeah. Um, So that's a great question, Laurel. Yeah. Thanks, Laurel. I love your question too. So as we sign off for our listeners, we're going to invite you. We're coming back with another podcast and another and another. We've got so many good ideas to share with you. So stay with us. We also want everybody to know that we welcome questions. So there will be um, uh, email where you can send questions to us, both of us, and we're going to have a point where we're going to be answering questions during the podcast. So all questions are welcome. And um, I would say that, you know, if you feel intimidated by doing the work, this is a great opportunity to just let yourself explore with us in a very unintimidating way. You know, you don't have to use your name, you don't have to do whatever, you know, like here we are ready to just invite you in and support you in doing your own beautiful work. Oh, it's going to be good. And what a great place to do that work together. Yeah. yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. And um, I welcome the questions and opportunities to, to help others through it. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. All right, Laurel. I'll see you next time. Okay. Have a good afternoon. Thanks. Bye. Bye.